today I'm going to be putting a base on Ike, which is Juna's moon. Uh, so I've constructed this rocket here, which is basically a Saturn V, if it was built by a Kerbal Space Program player. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. it you know, it's got a lot more Delta V than it needs, but I'm terribly yeah, inefficient at missions, so I'm, I, need, I need this amount of Delta V. Uh, you can see I'm punching through the upper layers of the atmosphere now. Uh, and we can just detach those uh, side tanks. They're transferring into the main tank. Uh, so, there we go. Look at that. Look at that beautiful detachment. Absolutely beautiful. But now, that bottom stage there, that mammoth engine, is fully fueled. Because those side tanks, as I said, were transferring into the, into the main tank. So you can see me, uh, I skipped past the burning to orbit. Uh, but yeah, now I'm in an orbit. And I'm just planning uh, my burn to escape Kerbin's fear of influence and get to Juna. I'm deploying those fairings there in a great, a beautiful way. Uh, as you can see, you can see the base is there. Now, it's got a very oversized uh, antenna, uh, but it, it needs that because, you know, Juna's, Juna's far away from the Kerbal's home planet to Kerbin, which you can see me just hovering above here. So, um, I actually did um, went on a suborbital trajectory just to uh, detach that mammoth engine and quickly got back into an orbit. And now, as you can see, I've performed my escape burn and um, now I'm just planning a mid-course correction to get an encounter with Juna. So, um, now we can just warp up away from Kerbin and goodbye, Kerbin. Um, I'm sure that might be the last time the Kerb will see Kerbin. I I'm sure they'll see it again, actually. I, I definitely think some long time in the future I'll do a rescue mission. Uh, but now, um, we're just performing our burn to get there. Now I can detach that Rhino engine that's out of, uh, out of fuel. That will be space junk, unfortunately. Uh, but now we've got the skipper engine, which should, should get us into an orbit of Juna. Now you can see my periapsis is just above the atmosphere, and we can just warp around the sun, uh, for a couple hundred days. And, um, there we go. Look at that. That's the beautiful red planet approaching. Uh, now, if you're not a Kerbal Space Program player, you might be wondering why I'm calling the planet Juno. Like, that looks like Mars. No, no, this this is like an alien solar system with, like, alien planets and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, but that's why. But now we are circularized at Juno, and it is time to get to Ike. After a quick inclination adjustment and detaching that skipper engine as it ran out of fuel, we are now here at Ike. Uh, so we can just perform a retrograde burn to get into an orbit and obviously also descend to the surface. So after getting to a relatively flat, it's it's not flat at all, is it? But I wanted to land in the daytime. That's that's why I went into an orbit before I descended. So um, I'm just deploying the landing legs here and we can begin our descent. Now I really screwed up. I really screwed up. And uh, the, the retrograde marker, it just wasn't right. And and uh, and I kind of I kind of crashed. And, um, yeah. But the base survived. The entire base is still intact. Not a single part of the actual base is destroyed. So, yeah, that that is... Wow. The, the Kerbal's faces are all like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe I'm alive. And neither can I, guys. Um, but now, yeah, we've got some debris around the base, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but, hey, at least we're safe on the ground of Ike. So we can get the Kerbals out on EVA, just so they can take in the magnificent view, and also plant the flag. So, um, I've got three Kerbals, three Kerbals in this colony, uh, and yeah, there they all are standing there. Now it's time to work on the space station. So here is the space station, and here is the rocket that I've built for it. Um, it's pretty similar to the last rocket, but it's a little bit smaller. It's got um, it's got SRBs instead of just the same liquid fuel engine, and a mammoth uh, mammoth liquid fuel engine um, as the as the core stage. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see me performing my ascent here. It's pretty it's it's pretty smooth. I started my gravity turn a bit earlier, as it's it, it's less likely to flip this rocket. Uh, just breaching through the upper atmosphere here. You, you guys have already seen the ascent. Uh, but there we go. There, there's the booster detachment. And there is the Rhino engine. The Rhino engine is really efficient in a vacuum. It's probably one of my favorite engines, actually. Uh, but you can see here, I'm just getting into an orbit. And uh, then I can detach the fairings just like that. 
and uh, there's the space station. So you can see the space station. You might also be able to see there's a little lander. That's to like you know take take Kerbals from the space station to the surface base. So it's going to be pretty cool. And now you can see it's very wobbly here. I probably didn't add enough struts. But I was like, you know what? I've got this first attempt. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not reverting back to vehicle assembly building. Yeah, I was just too lazy. Uh, but you can see me performing a very wobbly escape burn there. And now we can just warp around to my mid-course correction that I set up. And uh, we can also detach that Rhino engine stage as it's out of fuel. Now we can just warp over to Juna and uh, begin our retrograde burn to circularize. Uh, so you can get a wonderful view of the red planet from the space station. And I also got an Ike encounter when I was circularizing, which is absolutely perfect. So I warped over to Ike here and um, uh, yeah, just circularizing at Ike. Not much to say, it's pretty easy. Uh, also did an inclination adjustment just so I'm over the base. And um, yeah, there we go. With the last puff of fuel, we got a relatively circular orbit. Now, um, we can also detach the uh, lander stage. And let me show you, I've got these hinges here. So these actually, these solar panels actually expand out, which I think is pretty cool. I should do this in more of my space stations because it's it lets it fit in the fairing easier. What a wonderful view you can get from the cupola module on the space station. Um, so I'm just transferring the Kerbals into the lander, and now I'm just undocking the lander from the space station. We can do a very uh, clumsy exit. I'm so bad at using RCS thrusters. I'm, I'm just please don't hit the solar panel. Oh, oh, I was real. I was really scared there. If you didn't know, in Kerbal space program, solar panels are super sensitive. If you hit them once, they'll just be broken. They'll just rip apart, tear apart. So, yeah. Luckily, I didn't hit it. Uh, so now I just turned on those engines, waited till I was over the base, as you can see there. And now I'm just descending to the base. Now I wanted to land like beside the base just because like yeah, I, I just wanted to touch down like somewhere near the base and then do a second bunny hop to go over to the base. So you can see here landing, landing successful. So now we're just going to do a quick bunny hop again just over to the uh, to the base. And uh, you can see there, you should actually, no, you can't see the base, sorry. Um, but now I'm descending and you can see the base just over there, which is awesome. So we're, we're pretty much here. Now I did one more bunny hop just to get me even closer. But I think that was the best I could get. I, I really, I was too nervous to go any closer really. Uh, but now we can uh, EVA all of the Kerbals, including the ones that I took from the space station. And look at that, a marvelous view they get. Now while the... Um, the Kerbals were um, were going into the base, one Kerbal thought of the Kerbal stranded in orbit, with no friends all alone. So, he decided to go up to orbit and, you know, give him some company up in orbit, because, you know, it's he, he must have been pretty lonely up there. So, ascending with that landing stage, um, and now we can dock after many many failed attempts. I am so bad at docking. You can see there. I this just shows how bad I am at docking. But finally, at this attempt, I was like, oh, please dock. Please dock. Please. Please. Surely. Surely. And, um, when I docked, I was, I was very excited. I got way too excited. Now I can just EVA them into the same, same module, just so they can hang out, you know? Look at that. Now he's got some company. Um, so guys, um, yeah, now they're both docked. So yeah, that's pretty much missing success. The base is set up, the station is in orbit, and we are all good. But wait, 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 don't, don't go yet. Uh, since you guys made it this far into the video, I wanted to give you a bit of a reward. And that is to show you, uh, a bit of a, like, a, a montage of all of the failed attempts of this mission. Because there were a lot of failed attempts, and it was very irritating. Uh, so let me show you that, uh, let me show you that, uh, just right here.